What's up guys? Have you ever wondered what a scrapyard does when they get material that they can't identify? If they have one, they're using either an XRF or a laser analyzer. This is the laser model and we can use it to shoot material and it'll tell us exactly what the contents are and usually it'll tell us the alloy or the series or whatever type of material it specifically is. But if it doesn't have that data, it'll at least tell us what it's composed of. So let me show you how it works and we'll walk around the yard and shoot a few different things. Well guys, since we're already in front of the stainless steel pile, I figured we'd start here first. So I had this little piece of stainless that I just picked up off the ground. And to use the gun or the analyzer, all I have to do is place it in front of the screen and pull the trigger. Keep in mind that to get the most accurate reading, you should make sure that the surface is 100% clean. So if it needs to, you can grind it down to get the surface cleaner, or if it has some sort of coating on it, you've gotta grind that coating off. This is gonna be clean enough to give us a reading, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But if it didn't give an accurate reading, I would take uh, some sort of buffing cloth or um, even a grinding wheel on an angle grinder and grind this down. But it's pretty straightforward. Just hold it in front, pull the trigger, give it a second to analyze. And then you will see at the top, this is 301 stainless steel, and then it'll give us the content. So we got about 23.5% chromium, 67% iron, and about 6.5% nickel. So let's walk around the yard and check out some of the other items that we have around here and give those a test and see what they are. Out here at our baler, we have some of this thick brand new aluminum. It's all the exact same type. So when we get material like this, we'll keep it separate and then bale it separately. But let's go ahead and shoot a piece. We just had a terrible storm come through here, so we got water everywhere, but this should be clean enough to get an accurate reading. So this is 5052 aluminum, which I already knew. That's how we buy this material and that is how we process it and sell it. But if it didn't tell us 5052 at the top, we could scroll through the different elements and narrow it down based on that. And this is where an analyzer really comes in handy if you're trying to sort all of these different types of aluminum by alloy. So I'm gonna do my best here to try to analyze several different pieces and see if we can get a reading of different types. I am trying to do this while holding the camera, so it's probably not as easy as if I had two free hands so you can see this one says no match but we can see the contents a lot of times when it says no match if you go back and you clean the surface you are analyzing and shoot it again you will get a match like I said these are all have been out here in the elements it was just raining none of this has been cleaned so that piece you can see is also 50 52 this really thick piece underneath it is probably 6061 if I had to guess and that was correct so typically whenever we're sorting material we go based on other factors other than having to use this analyzer every time if we had to shoot every single piece of material we would never get anything processed. So we always check with a magnet, and then we check to see how heavy it is, what color it is, and that piece there is 3105. So this bay of aluminum is our MLC, which stands for Mixed Low Copper Aluminum. We also call it New Aluminum, and that's a good way to understand what it is. It's basically new production aluminum with no paint, no contaminants, and it's mixed alloys. So. Uh, you're going to have some 3,000, some 5,000, some 6,000 series. We do try to keep 2,000 and 7,000 series out of this, but for us, it is not worth the time and effort to use this analyzer to sort every single piece. So this gets baled together and sold together. Most commonly what we're using this analyzer for is to sort aluminums by alloy. You, typically, extrusion aluminum can be told apart based on other attributes besides having to analyze it. So right here, I've got two pieces of aluminum, and if we we're sorting this by hand, based on the shape, we would know that this one is 6063, and that this one is most likely 6061. But let's go ahead and analyze them and just make sure. So 
So you can see that piece is 6063. Then this one the same way. Again, I haven't prepped any of these surfaces, so if we get a little bit of a funky reading, that's why. Same thing, we got 6061, which I pretty much already knew that that was. And the nice thing about these is they're very versatile, so we can use them on all different types of materials. So I've just shown you, we did stainless steel and then several different types of aluminum, but we can even do copper and copper alloys. So I'm standing in front of our brass box, but I just wanted to show you the importance of making sure that you're not shooting a material with a coating on it. So I've got this piece here and you can see where they have hit it with a grinder. It's definitely yellow brass, but it is coated probably with nickel, but sometimes you'll have tin plated or silver plated. So let's shoot the outside of this and see what this coating reads as, and then we'll shoot it on the yellow part and see what it says there. All right, we've got no match but it says we got 25% nickel and 65% chromium. So if that was accurate, we would have a pretty valuable nickel alloy, which we know better that that's not the case because when you scratch it, it is yellow. But I have seen people make the mistake. I've even had some of the guys from here call me and say that they're analyzing something and they're not sure how to price it because it was shooting as 100% tin. And then I asked them, did you, did you grind the surface off? Did you scratch down into it and see if that material was consistent all the way through? And majority of the time, that's not the case. It's just a tin plated or a silver plated. So now let's shoot the yellow part and see what it says there. This is gonna be a little trickier because it's not a very big scratch surface. This may take me more than one attempt here. All right, this time we got nickel silver, which is saying 16% nickel, 18% zinc, and 64% copper. So I definitely got it closer to the yellow spot, but I don't think I was all the way on it because I did still get some of the nickel. I would have more than likely gotten close to 60% copper and about 35 or 40% zinc. So I'm gonna try it one more time. Maybe I'll try it on this inside section. but you could see it was definitely very, very different from the first time. Okay, this time we're getting even closer. So 70% copper, 26% zinc, and 2% nickel. So on the same piece, we went from high nickel and high chromium to high copper and high zinc. And that's why it's very important to not only rely on this, or if you are relying only on this, make sure that you are shooting the appropriate surface and make sure that the material is prepped correctly. I feel like I just gave you guys an infomercial on how the laser analyzer works. I know some of you are going to think that that is an XRF gun instead of a laser. That one is actually the laser model. Uh, we opted not to go with the XRF, but they do make XRF or X-ray analyzers as well. I know you guys are going to ask, so that particular model costs somewhere between twenty dollars and $25,000. I can't remember exactly. We've had that one for several years now. And I know that seems expensive because it is, but it really saves us in the long run. Whenever we get tricky material or customers that have new material or tricky material that we're not used to, we can analyze it and make sure that we are 100% accurate whenever we're purchasing it, processing it, and selling it. But anyways, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you've got any ideas for future content or future videos, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.